Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a nice little Thunderbolt dock from CalDigit. This is their Thunderbolt 3 dock called the TS3. We previously looked at the TS3 Lite and one of the things that I like about the CalDigit docks is that they work with Windows and the Mac and the difference between this one and the Lite edition that we looked at is that it's smaller, it has a different port configuration, it also provides power to a laptop up to 85 watts so it'll charge a macbook pro the newer macbook pros as well as a number of windows machines that use 85 watts of power or less and it's one of the few docks out there that actually works cross-platform many of the other ones i've been seeing out there uh, only work with the Mac. So we're going to be taking a closer look at this one in this review, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from CalDigit. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is $299 as you see it. That includes a half meter Thunderbolt 3 cable. Uh, the cable of course provides power as well as all of the video and data connections that go back and forth and I'll show you how that works in a second. But you can also get it with a longer cable if you want. So the one meter cable version costs $349. They have a two meter cable version for $369. Of course, you can buy your own compatible cable and do the same thing, but you do need to make sure that it supports the power delivery because it is uh, providing 85 watts of power through this little cable in addition to all the other stuff that it is doing. I really like the construction of this. It is all metal, uh, really very solid on the desk here. It doesn't tip over too easily. It's got a nice balance to it. Uh, if you want, you can also put it into this orientation and they include some rubber feet in the box that you can put on the uh, bottom venting there to uh, make it uh, not scratch up the surface of your desk. This portion here is already uh, nice and rubberized so it doesn't move around too much there either. So pretty nicely uh, designed here. On the front you've got a bunch of ports here. It's very shiny as you can see. A USB 3 port right here, a full-size USB port. This will charge a device even if your computer is powered down or not even plugged in. So you get power out of that all the time. You have some audio connections here. They sound pretty good. It won't be as good as the audio that might be coming out of your Mac or a high-end Windows laptop, but it's good enough if you want a single cable solution. On the back here, you've got a bunch of ports, which is what you want to see on one of these docks. We've got gigabit ethernet here. We'll be testing the speed of that in a second. You get two more USB 3 ports back here. You also get two eSATA ports which is kind of interesting to see this nowadays with all this high-speed USB stuff that we have. But if you have eSATA hard drives, you can plug them right in there. I did do a test on that earlier, which we'll get to when we get into some of the performance discussion. This is where your computer plugs into because the power is also delivered through that port. Uh, but because Thunderbolt 3 allows for daisy chaining, you can connect additional devices to this. If you have a drive array or something like that, uh, you can plug it into that port there and uh, keep going with your Thunderbolt devices as you move along. Now, the Mac, of course, has four Thunderbolt ports on it, but uh, many Windows devices only have one. So if you have multiple Thunderbolt devices, you plug this one in first and then attach the device over here to continue the chain running down. I did find it did not work with an external GPU. I did try to hook up my eGPU that we've tested here on the channel before to this, and it did not work uh, in that configuration, but I was able to get some other Thunderbolt 3 devices to work, like a hard drive and a couple of other things. You can also put in one of those USB uh, to HDMI adapters, for example, into that port to uh, get an additional video output. It also has display port here, and uh, what you can do with this is power two 4K displays at 60 hertz. So one of them uh, will be coming out of the display port. The other one you'll need to get an adapter of some kind for the other Thunderbolt port. It'll also do a single 5K display, and I was able to test this earlier. I got uh, my Windows and my Mac machine to output to a 4K TV in addition to a pretty wide uh, monitor there, that 3840 by 1440 monitor that, or 3440 by 1440 monitor that I tested earlier. Uh, that monitor runs at 100 hertz, and I was able to get it again to work with uh, both Windows and the Mac, so no issues with DisplayPort or video output either through this port or through the uh, additional Thunderbolt port there, so that was a good thing. Now, the one thing that's really funny about these docks is the size of the power adapter. The power adapter is as large as the uh, device is itself, but it does have a nice long cable on there, so you can put this under your desk and out of the way. Uh, because of the short cable length of the Thunderbolt 3 cable, you'll definitely want to keep uh, this part close to your computer on the desk. So let's get this going, and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so I've got everything connected now to the dock. So on the back here, I've got Ethernet going in. We've got DisplayPort going out to the monitor. 
monitor. Our power cable, of course, is connected, and we've got the Thunderbolt 3 cable here that will be connecting to the computer in a second. On the front, I did plug in my wireless keyboard dongle for my keyboard trackpad combo device, and all I'm going to do now is just plug in this Thunderbolt cable. I can go either direction. It can be right side up or upside down. It doesn't matter. I'll plug it in here to this port, and we should hear it charging, hopefully. There we go. And we'll see now the uh, display light up here in a second, and I can get in to use the computer uh, like it was a desktop. And this is pretty useful. In fact, when I was uh, working at a day job, I would bring my laptop to work and just plug it into a dock like this and uh, get up and running with my day. But back then, the docks weren't charging my computer. So uh, in that case, I had to have a separate power cable nearby. This replaces the need for that because this single cable uh, does everything that this dock can do, uh, plus provides video to the display. Pretty cool stuff. So the first thing I wanted to do was test the speeds of the USB ports, and I got the Samsung T5 that I reviewed the other day. This is a super fast little portable SSD, and what I'm going to do here is just connect it up with a traditional USB cable uh, to the back here to one of its USB 3 ports. So we'll pop that in there, and that will uh, get us going there. I'm just going to switch over to a full screen view here. We're going to load the Blackmagic Disk speed test, which will just push a lot of data uh, over to this drive very quickly here. We've got that drive selected. Now, when we tested this on the Mac directly, we were seeing write speeds above 450 megabytes per second, and reads were hitting about 500 megabytes per second. But you can see here we're topping off around uh, 350 megs on the reads and about 320 on the writes. So it's not running as fast as uh, it would with a direct connection, at least with this drive, but it's still more than adequate for a a relatively fast SSD. You're just not going to get the same speed you might get if you were directly connected. What I'm going to do now, though, is disconnect this drive and plug it into that Thunderbolt port on the back and see if we can do a direct USB-C connection to squeeze out a little more performance. Let's take a look. All right, so now I've got this solid state drive directly connected to the extra Thunderbolt port on the back of the dock here. Now, I should point out this drive is not a Thunderbolt drive. It is a USB-C drive, but Thunderbolt and USB-C play nicely together most of the time. And if you've got a super fast drive like this, the best performance will be gained from that Thunderbolt connector on the dock and not through its USB port. So take a look at the speed we're getting now with this very same drive. Uh, we're seeing write speeds at probably about 100 megabytes per second faster than what we saw with the dock's uh, own USB ports. And we're seeing read speeds close to 500 megabytes per second. So a significant performance difference here uh, connecting this USB-C drive to the Thunderbolt connector uh, versus one of the built-in USB connectors on here. What does it mean for the average consumer? Nothing, because uh, 300 megabytes per second or thereabouts, as you saw when we were using uh, the USB ports on here, are more than adequate for moving photos and other things things around, but if you are relying on extreme performance, you're not going to get extreme performance out of these USB connectors. You'll want to uh, either connect your drive through the extra Thunderbolt port, or if you have a Mac like I do, uh, using one of the other USB-C Thunderbolt connectors on there for the best performance. Now, I also tested the eSATA ports here on the back to see if we could get better storage performance out of those. Uh, they ran at the same speed as USB. What I did as a test was I ran uh, two solid state drives in RAID 0 through a special little dock that I have that uh, runs out via eSATA. So if we were going to see the maximum speed of this thing, that would be the way to see it, given that we've got uh, the potential to read maybe six or 800 megabytes per second out of those two drives in uh, tandem. And unfortunately, I was only getting the same speeds I was out of the native USB port. So it looks like the two eSATA ports on the back here share that connection. The other thing that shares the connection is the ethernet. And I've got what's called an iPerf test loaded up here. So let's zoom the screen in a little bit and I'll connect over to my uh, desktop in the other room via ethernet. And as you can see here, uh, we're getting very good performance on the ethernet. So about 941 megabits per second through the ethernet cable here. That's about what I would expect out of something like this. And it runs just fine. and will certainly give you a networking boost over Wi-Fi when you dock. Uh, just know though that because that Ethernet port is on the same uh, bus as all of the other devices that are connected to this, including the USB and the eSATA. If you're pushing a lot of data to a drive, for example, you might see a sudden uh, decrease in Ethernet performance until that drive transfer is done.
Now, I did test this earlier with my Dell XPS 15, which is a uh, early generation of that product, which was often very finicky with Thunderbolt 3 devices. It worked fine with this. The uh, Ethernet worked, all the ports worked, even the power delivery worked. But, and there's always a but, if you've got a Windows laptop that's like a 15-inch laptop, typically those require more power. So the XPS 15 from Dell, for example, uses 130 watts of power. I also saw that the Lenovo Yoga 720 also uses used a lot of power well above 100 watts, and therefore this dock will not provide enough power. Now, some of the laptops like my Dell will give you a warning and let you know that you might run at a slower speed or you might start draining your battery out if you put the computer under load. Other manufacturers may choose to deal with that lack of power in different ways. So my recommendation is that if you are using this with a larger Windows laptop, one that requires more than 85 watts of power, take a look at the TS3 Lite. That one costs $100 less than this one, so $199. The only thing you lose is the power delivery, which you're not going to get enough of anyhow, uh, and the two eSATA ports, which aren't all that fast to begin with. I think that one might be the better option for larger Windows laptops. You will still have to plug power into your device to get it going, but uh, it does uh, provide the same functionality for less money, especially because you won't be able to make use out of the power delivery that sets this one apart. But if you've got a smaller Windows laptop, like some of the 13-inch laptops with Thunderbolt connectors or uh, a MacBook Pro, for example, it's a great and elegant solution because you just plug in that single cable and everything just comes to life and uh, you've got yourself a very easy way to transition from laptop to desktop when you get into the office. So overall, a very nice little dock here from CalDigit. I really like the form factor and the overall build quality. I like the fact that the power delivery works as advertised, at least with my MacBook Pro 15 here. And if your uh, computer supports 85 watts of power or less, this will also work the same way with yours, provided uh, you have a Thunderbolt port and not just a USB-C port. A lot of folks get confused about this because USB-C C ports are identical to the Thunderbolt ports, and the only way to know you got Thunderbolt is to uh, look in your computer's manual to make sure that these are Thunderbolt ports, or perhaps uh, look on the port itself. A lot of times manufacturers will paint a little lightning icon next to that port, which will indicate that it is Thunderbolt. Typically, uh, lower cost laptops don't have Thunderbolt, but more expensive ones do. But again, you've got to check with your manufacturer first because if you don't have Thunderbolt, uh, the cable will fit, but nothing will happen when you plug it in. But if you do have Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt docks are always ideal compared to USB-C docks. They deliver better performance, and in my experience, have just worked more consistently than I've seen with similar USB-C docks. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.